Hi, my name is Gary Taylor. In this demo, I'm going to show how to use WinForm bindings using the controls within the designer. I'm going to start off by taking an example that I've already created. Here's something I've created earlier. I'm going to just paste these controls in. I'm just doing this to make life easier so you don't watch me copy and paste stuff. What I'm going to do is go and map this to a data source that I've got. Now I've already got a view model set up that um, looks the way that I want it. Just press see if it's available in this list. Yes, it is. Um, da, 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 da. Just going to show you quickly how I can add that. I could go to Add Objects Next, choose the depth model that you want. In this case, it's the user details view model and select that and click finish as I've already done that I don't need to do that I can just select this drop down user details then notice that once I click this I get this data binding source what's happened is within the WinForms it's created a data binding source object which I can use so if I go through and just update and surname so this application form is just going to get the first name and surname and put them together and show it in the dsl2 it's also got a save button that um, allows you to click the button and, and save these details okay so that's how you hook up the the controls to a data source but actually what i need to do now is actually hook up the source binding object to a data model if we go into the code behind, the way we do this is to actually use this object data source equals our view model. At the top, I've got a property which is the view model, and I'm creating an instance of it. And what's happening then is I'm setting up the bindings. So let's see this run. I have a few for demo purposes, but if I put in um, John Connor, you can see that the name is going in, uh, the details is going in. As I tab out, click save, you can see that the name of the controller has gone in this text box at the top, and John Connor has gone into the DSL. As I click save, you can also see that this number increments to show, just as a silly demo, that there's something going on. If I change that to X and put X on and actually tab away, you'll notice that it vanishes. So if I took X and sorry, and just move away with the mouse, not tab away, then it goes away. If I click X and tab away, then it actually updates. So what's going on there is this type of data binding that's associated with it when you make it in the designer. So if I can find the correct one to the designer click on it there's the advanced section within the bindings and this allows you to change how it works when it's updated so if i update to that to property changed and okay and run when i update that and just move my mouse away it updates and if i tab away it updates as well but if I do this with surname and just move them away, you can see that it resets itself because I've only done it for this one property. So to go through that again, and go to surname, go to advanced, change the settings to on property changed, OK. Rerun that. When I update surname and put something in and just move away, you can see that that updates. Click away, see that updates. And when I click save, it updates now the view model in the background what this is just a, a very simple view model it has um, first name surname and a cell two but it also has um, some events which is save and update cell two because they're the two core things that are happening and don't forget a counter so the event then um, raises the on event which updates the cell two concatenates the name and puts the counter on and this is the save action it then raises a property change so that the UI can be refreshed and I also invoke a save action so if anyone wants to occur 
that I've actually click save than they can do. Um, same with updating cell 2, I get the first name and surname, trim it and put it into cell 2 property. Then I raise the change to so that the UI can be updated. And then I also raise the event so that anyone that's listening to this event can be notified. If I look at the main form and go into the design of this, um, we can see that I can actually create an instance of the object. In, in this case, it would be, uh, I believe it would be this one. We then set the value and I can actually action this delegate. And so that on this form, I have this user control in this text box. But what I'm able to do is I'm able to listen to the save being cl um, clicked and run this action. So this is completely outside of the user control. And that's why I have the ability to have the, the actions changed. What I would be able to do also is to listen to the um, uh, property changed event and on cell two update. So if I run this, what I should get now is when I move away, the cell two is updated. Oh, and because I've changed the updates, it won't work. Just bear with me. Because the sender's no longer a button, the sender was actually done on the text change, then this won't work. Um, because previously what I've done is I've just got it so that it was listening on clicks and they were only being fired from button events. So this would need to have its own action. So I would need to actually do something uh, like this. Let's do a message box. So whenever the cell two changes, hopefully what I should get is I get the boot to the screen whenever the cell two is done. As you can see, it actually fires quite a few times. You've got to be careful with this data mining because you can find that these things can be can be very active in a uh, firing because you can have things on, on property change, on text change, on click. And before you know it, these events are actually firing quite often. That's a simple way of doing binding within wind forms, just using the designer.